This video is brought to us by Red's Scale Scrapyard Parts Are Parts. I remember the Federated uh, commercials they had back in the, like, I think it was the 80s and 90s, where they just talked about parts are parts. But, uh, yeah, love it. Thank you. <laughs> I got a chuckle by seeing that, Red. Thank you so much for doing a shop card with us. Really, uh, really want to uh, support your channel, sir. If you would like a shop card from Red, there is his email address there. Hit him up for a card. We will have a link down below to his channel, of course. And uh, on the back side was some very nice words. He also gave us a pointy finger. And yes, I did double check to make sure which finger was pointing. And it's uh, it's the good one. So thank you very much, sir. I don't know if uh, little BG is going to be very happy about getting replaced by this guy. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, thanks again, Red, for doing a shop card with us. We truly appreciate that. And we appreciate you, sir. All right, on with the show. What's up, model building friends? Hey, it's Brian, and welcome back to the bench. Uh, we have ourselves a final. Finally a final, yay. Ah, I love that joke. Um, so the uh, HH60D Nighthawk uh, by Hasegawa. 172nd scale, otherwise known as the gentleman scale. And I figured out why it's known as the gentleman scale because you have to be an absolute gentleman in order to not swear your head off while building something on such a small scale. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. I actually swore a lot. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have her done. Done enough. Uh, I have a little pile of bits over here to the side. Things that aren't going to be added to this particular build, like the door gunner guy. Um, somebody had suggested that we can save this dude for the next build and we'll be a, a step ahead. Great idea. He's going to go into the into the people's parts box. Uh, we have a very important piece, which is the uh, instrument pa forward instrument panel. Um, somehow that got left out. Uh, <laughs> like when the fuselage halves are supposed to be put together. That's when that got left out. And since we have the uh, the door gunner positions closed... We're not adding the weapons in, so uh, those will send off to the side, and maybe I can use them on a different build a little later on. Now, uh, again, we did uh, a video about this earlier last week, and um, we talked about all the issues that we were having, how we dropped it on the garage floor while trying to paint it, uh, how we had uh, assembly issues, how we had various amounts of paint issues, and then, uh, fi but finally, hey, at least the decals were good. Hooray! But, uh, yeah, there was one one bit of human error that uh, I, I'm very embarrassed about, but I will show you. I don't have the rotor attached just yet, so that we can uh, sneak in and show some close-ups as best we can. So move that out of the way. And then we'll gently, gently... So I painted the the, uh, the windows green up here. I thought that, you know, I've seen helicopters with the, with literally the greenhouse painted green. Uh, I need to do one more pass on this side. It's a little thin. But can you make out how cloudy that is? Yeah, well, uh, and then also this, this bit of the window here. It, it turns out that while I was doing all of my priming and spraying and stuff, this passenger door here, I say passenger door, this door here had fallen in a little bit. And you can see how it wants to stay kind of pushed in. It had fallen in a little bit, creating an air gap. I was not expecting this, but uh, yeah, there was a little air gap in there. So some primer got up inside the window and on the inside of the uh, windscreen there. And um, <laughs> I can't I can't get it off. <laughs> I tried using some uh, some 90, 90, 90 proof, 90%, 91% rubbing alcohol. That did a little bit, but uh, it's really difficult to get up in there with a Q-tip and get it all uh, scrubbed around and stuff. It's easier taking a COVID test than just to try and get up in there and uh, wipe that all down. So we did our best, and I thought, well, we're going to paint that kind of a transparent green anyhow, so maybe that'll hide some of it. And on camera, it does a little bit, especially with all the glare from the... Uh, the lens flare and everything so that you know that looks not so bad but uh it took forever to try and get uh our co-pilot wedged in there he was um hey that's a great name we'll call him wedge we had, it took forever to get wedge in there but uh, we finally did we actually had to trim off part of his leg because the control stick was in the way and everything so he's one foot in it right now um decals went on fairly well uh we did do a gloss coat and then used uh, good amounts of microsol to suck everything down and then went and hit it with some ts80 flat coat to seal it all up and it looks 
looks pretty good. I mean, it does look pretty good. Um, I do like how this tongue piece here came out. That I'm glad I took the time to go back and uh, blend that all in nicely so that it wasn't didn't have a, a seam down the center. And then, of course, your seam up, up, up top here looks really, really good. Um, there is a little bit of a funkiness in the paint because um, when we went to go do the, the flat clear over everything, I was a little worried about using any alcohol to try and clean off spots here and there. I, I could have just used dish soap or whatever, some Dawn dish soap, but I didn't think of it at the time. Uh, I went over, I, I, so I was literally about going over this and, and cleaning it all up. So the Silly Putty did leave a couple little oily areas. So there was a couple, like right in here, you can see some fish eyeing happening right in there. So there we go. Sorry about that. That's, you know, um, what, what's funny is, I'm a decent model builder, <laughs> but then working on this guy, like it, it felt like, honestly, goodness, it felt like I was starting from scratch and, and my build skills were all like 10 year old build skills. So yeah, I definitely need to do another pass on that, that window there. Uh, but um, I do love this subject so much so that I'm willing to do this again. Maybe not in this particular camo scheme, even though it does look cool with that third color on there. That 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 really does help. Uh, but I I know the mistakes that I made, and I've I've logged all my mistakes, and I'm going to um, by by way of making these videos, uh, and I'm going to uh, see if we can't do better on the next one. And and for me, that's the whole point of model building is trying to do better. Now, in the past, when I built these guys, I always misread the instructions. I just, you know, didn't realize what they were talking about. But this light up on top of here, um, I always paint the whole thing red from the outside, right? Turns out you're supposed to paint it red from the inside because it's got a, a cone molded inside there. You're supposed to paint that red. This is just a transparent pl uh, plexiglass bubble that goes around it. So I was like, oh, that's cool. All right, well, learned a lesson there. And then I actually have my marker lights on. Uh, it turns out this one's supposed to be shaved off because that one's supposed to be in, in place. But I don't know, kind of like it, so I'm leaving it. And this is the first uh, um, Blackhawks uh, type of helicopter I've done where I've actually painted all the uh, little all the little lights and such. So they, they came out looking really, really good. We did a silver base of um, XF, uh, no, excuse me, X11. Uh, just painted on a silver base, let that dry, and then came back with a couple dollops of, a uh, couple dabs of, uh, let's see, what is it, X27, I guess, is that the transparent red? Yeah, X27. This stuff here, the one that looks like it's bleeding. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Uh, I, I am uh, disappointed in my skills. I, I was hoping I would have a better, a better level of skill to work on something like this, but then... Um, I was talking to Mrs. BG about it, and she goes, well, you have a really good skill set for building model cars. You don't have a good skill set yet for doing military helicopters, which is a completely different animal altogether. So just because I'm a good model builder doesn't mean I can take a whack at something that's outside my comfort zone and do a good job at it right out of the box. So um, I, I find that philosophy very comforting, and uh, I will stick with that. I did go ahead and pose open the uh, the door since we have some stuff going on there, and I did glue back in one of the benches there. But I thought, yeah, I'll leave the doors open, you know, kind of uh, just kind of go with that. Oh, also, uh, the round L's are supposed to be more forward on the on the fuselage. That was going to be right in the middle of that dark green spot. I didn't plan that very well, so I moved it back, which meant I had to move that back a little bit. It's not, you know, it is what it is. It's trivial stuff at best. So have our, our markers on there. And then the underside, we have a round L placed down there as well. And I got to do a little bit of touch up here and there. But all in all, I'm very, very happy with how it came out, even though I was uh, laboring with my, with my skill set on this guy here. Um, it's kind of interesting to be st stuck on a build and then have that kind of shift have my skills sort of like shift back to uh, primary school type of, of things. It's like, oh, my basics. Oh, I forgot all my basics. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, it's an interesting thing. An interesting thing for me to have discovered about myself and in my, my model building is when I'm up against the wall like this, um, my, uh, my, my, my basic skills set, I guess is the best way to say that, 
close out the window and I just start, you know, flailing and hoping for the best. So that's a very important lesson I learned about myself. And, um, well, I guess that's the whole thing about model building, right? Uh, what was it the old man always said? Every model should be better than the last. Well, I can guarantee that the next one we do will be better than this one. So <laughs> we set the bar nice and low. <laughs> All right, y'all, thanks again for all the folks that joined in and are still working on their whirly birds. It's like my buddy Mike says over at Scale Speedworks. Uh, deadlines are just a suggestion. Don't worry about it. Maybe in a few days or a couple of weeks, you'll have something you can put proudly on your shelf and or hang from the ceiling. In your, maybe you have your own aerodrome like Mr. Mac does. But uh, yeah, just, just keep at it, folks, uh, if you're not done yet. It's no big deal at all. We just wanted you to build something that was in the closet or in the stash that's been getting neglected because your mother-in-law heard you build models and she thought, oh, well, this ought to work. And she didn't know you're a car guy. So, <laughs> so there you go. All right, y'all, take it easy. Um, if you're still working on yours, hang in there. The finish line is probably not far off. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all in the, again in the future. Bye now.